after you don't think you're gonna uh, use it a lot, I'm gonna do one or two examples before we actually uh, go. Um, So we have support reactions. So first of all, what you have to do is that you have to go ahead and draw the free body diagram for that. As I said, later on when we get um, comfortable with that, you're not going to redraw it, you just do it on the same shape. But for now, I'm still going to do that. So what you have is, this our shape. And then what we have after that, so we suspend it, then we'll put the active forces on that. For the active forces that I'm gonna put there, so for 19 newton meters, so this is 19 meters. So that's the, for that distributed load, so we cannot work with the distributed load, we have to replace it with a single load. So we need to know its magnitude and its location. So its magnitude is how much? The magnitude is the area under the load or the curve. So the area of that triangle is half of 80 times this length, which is 1.1. And then, now, these are the forces that wants to move it, and then the forces that wants to hold it in place. So it's gonna be, here I have a pin, the pin doesn't let it go up and down, doesn't let it go left or right. So I have to have one support to make sure it's not going up and down, one support to make sure it's not going left or right. And does it have a name? Just say A. Again, it's just A. So I'm gonna have here two forces. 
again the direction can choose any direction you want a x a y and for the b at the b is the smooth contact so smooth contact only doesn't let it go perpendicular to the b if one wants to go down it doesn't hold it if one wants to go to up it will push it back so it's going to be something like this at the b and holding it in place and doesn't let it go and if this is 30 degree then this is going to be 30 degree But this one is perpendicular to this one, this one is perpendicular to this one. The only thing left is the location of that force. The location of that is one third from the base or two third from the base. So it's going to be part on the location of that. So from that end, it's going to be one third of. 1.5 or here is a two thirds of 1.5 the interior length why did we choose two thirds of one third again it's going through the centroid of the triangle. Mm -hmm. The single load goes to the centroid of the load, and the centroid of the load for the triangle is there. It's one third from here to the third from there. Oh, thank you. And if any, if whenever you forgot that, you have the table. The table is here, and it has all of them. So But if it's a centroid, this is one third of this length. So now we have all the forces, all the uh, reactions, so we can solve it. The first thing that we have to go ahead and look at, see what we can do. So the first thing first, I have to get this in the x and y direction, the nv. So, Now, if I write if I write sigma f x zero, how many unknown I'm gonna get? Sigma f x zero, how many unknown I'm gonna get? Two. So sigma f x is zero is not gonna help because I'm too unknown. Unless I want to solve the system of equation, which I try to avoid. If I write sigma f y equal to zero, still I'm going to get two unknowns, correct? So sigma f x or sigma f y because they're going to give you two unknowns, probably not going to help you. What about the m? Can I write the sigma m about any points that give me only one unknown? Yeah, if you write around the, the only moment would be the 90. 
So by writing, yeah. the, yeah, by writing the bot here, the, un the unknown would be in sub B. Yeah. So, so I'm going to start. Remember when I said we are writing the, uh, the equilibrium equation? You don't need to use that order. You use it in an order that makes it easier to solve. Um, so I will start with the sigma m about 0 0.80, consider it counterclockwise positive. So if I write it about 0.8, so a x a y goes away. So I have the n b times the normal distance, which is going to be 0.75. Which direction? Counterclockwise, so it's going to be then I have this 60 here times this distance, which is two thirds of 1.5, which is going to be 1. I'm going to just try to show you know where this comes from. And this is clockwise, so it's going to be negative. And then I have this 90, which is clockwise, so it's going to be negative as well. Anything else? So from there I should be able to get the ends of B. So if I've done it correctly, it should come up, just check it, but it should come up as 200 newtons. Now that I have the NB, so I have NB sine and cosine theta as well. So I can go ahead and write either sigma of x or sigma of y0. The next thing I will write the sigma of x0. So if I write the sigma of x0 in the x direction, so I had the AX going there, I have minus NB cosine, uh, sorry, sine theta. Any other forces in the x? So I have one of these two. So, so ax is going to be, and b is 200, so it's going to be 200 sine 30, which comes out as 100. 100 Newton. And then I have the sigma of y is equal. So again, in the y direction, I have the a1 minus nb cosine theta minus 60. Any other force? So a y would be.
Sorry, let's do one more. There are a couple of examples that I'm going to do one more. I'm going to simplify it. So again, if this is the case that we have, we want to find uh, the reaction of the support for this case. So the first thing again, we want to write one of that. Go ahead, equal. Draw the object first. Not anything connected to that. Then we are going to put all the forces that want to move. Then we'll put all the forces that wants to hold it in place. So let's see how this goes for the case. A, B, and C. So let's start with the A. A is just the contact. The contact is always normal to the surface. Right? The contact. So what's going to be here is that it's going to be N at A. Or you can AX call it. Or let's see what the book calls it. So it's called the AX. Let's not call it AX. So but it's, it's going to be the contact. So it's going to be normal that it's going to be AX. 
What was the point B? Look at the point B on the C the same. So if this is a if this is it lets it go in this direction. There's no restriction. But it doesn't let it go up or down in this direction. Right? So if I go ahead and put a reaction at point B like this. Correct. But it doesn't let it to go up and down in that direction, but in the direction of the object, it doesn't put any restriction. The same here, so I can go ahead and put another one. See here. But that's what I want to do. I wanted to make sure it's not moving up and down here, but it can move. And the other direction easily. So if I put them B or C like that, it does it. B or C. And remember, I choose the direction, just I guess it might come out the opposite way uh, uh, that we have. So if I if this is correct now, the next thing is that I have to go ahead and find them uh, on the X and Y. So this is 30 degrees. This is 30 degrees. So that's the angle that I have. <clears throat> then this would be 30. This would be So I will go as this is a is a B X B Y and C X. Same here. B X is B sine theory. B Y is B sine theory. Okay, now that I have them, um, if I write sigma f x zero, how many unknown I'm going to get? Sigma f x, a x is unknown, b x is unknown, c x is unknown. A, B, C. Sigma F, Y. Why write sigma F, Y? C, Y would be unknown. B, Y would be unknown. It's going to be true. Still is not going to help. But about the moment. 
Is there any point that I can write a movement that let me have only one on one? If I write it about A, B or C are going to be on one. If I write it about B, C and A is going to be on one. If I write it about C, A and B is going to be on one. So I have no way of manipulating my equation in a way that I get one, one equation, one on one, one equation, one on one. So when I get to this condition, what should I do? So the only way is that write the entire equations, sigma fx0, sigma y0, sigma f0, and then solve it as a system of equations. So if I go ahead and, and remember, this time when you write it, because I want it, you have to keep all the ax, by, and cy there, even if it is not there. So, sigma fx0. Send it. I'm going to put A, X, B, and C to make sure that they are in the system. So for the A, I have minus A, X. And I'm going to write it like that. So minus 1, A, X. For the B, X, positive, so I have plus B sine 30. For the C, I have plus C sine 30. Anything else? So it's going to be 0. For the C point of Y, Again, I start from from the A. So it's going to be zero A X. Okay. To make sure it's, it's not getting you confused later on, just change it to A. Then for the B, so I have the BY, which is um, B cosine here. For the C, is I have C cosine 30 minus 300. And then I will say, write the sigma m y plus zero. What point I can write it about any point that I want, and then what point a positive. Why I write it about point a? Because these two are already perpendicular to that, that so the distance is easy to calculate. So again. It's going to be 0 times A. The A doesn't have a moment, but it's still I'm going to put it there because I want it there. 0 times A. Then for the B, it's going to be B times the distance, which is going to be 2 meter. And about that, it's going to be clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. So it's going to be clockwise, it's going to be negative. The same for the C. C times the distance is 6. And then I have 4000 positive or negative.
idea of three hundred on the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then I have the three hundred. No, it's the three hundred. So you have the three hundred. Five. The distance is two four two, so it's eight. And what's it for negative? Counterclockwise. Positive. And then the four thousand. Thank you. So now I'm gonna just just a system of equation. So I'm gonna just rewrite them in that format that we have. So it's gonna be negative one. Sine KRD, sine KRD, you get zero, cosine KRD, cosine KRD, and then I have zero, negative two, negative six, A, B, C, and then I will bring the entire, the, the constant value to the other side. It's going to be 0, it's going to be 300, and it's going to be minus 3 times 8 minus 4,000. So that, that's the system that we have and we have to solve it. Uh, Are there one? So this is going to be 300 sine 30 passed through the point A, so it doesn't have any. So if I have everything correctly here, so A should come out as 100. So just one, one more time, so that 300, I have to find this, com I use this component to be perpendicular to the arm and the other component will be along the arm which doesn't have any more. If I want to use the 300, then I have to find this distance, the 8 times cosine here, either way.
So, So, if I, if I have an object, any object that I still have, still have an object like this. If I apply a force like this here, How it's going to be in equilibrium if I only can apply one force at least? If I only can apply one force, one force at B, how should be the force <coughs> at B to make sure it's going to be in equilibrium? Yes, it has to point down, obviously. Uh, I was thinking you could maybe move the force F uh, along this line of action to figure out where B could intersect it perpendicularly um, and have that force come down from that. So if I assume, okay, I get rid of that. Not going to work. And I put the B here, not the B, the force there. Is it in a blue view? Yes or no? Yes. So, does it cause it to spin? Around which point? Right. So I have two forces like this. I don't think that would make it spin. They seem to have canceled each other out. But what about the spin? Yeah, it doesn't move. But does it spin or not? Like a steering wheel again, if you hold the steering wheel and one of your hand pushing off, one of your hand. But it, it, will, it will rotate only to a certain point because after that you can't continue to move your hand up. Okay. At that specific, as you always be, here is a time. At that specific time, is it in a blue wheel or not? No. So is it in a blue wheel? No. So how can it? If I want to make it in a group, you know, where should I put that here? On point A. So they're coming from the exact same There's one solution on A, but where else? So if I look at this, so I have this, this one. 
and I want to add another one to cancel that and also doesn't make it rotate. So 140 is here, which is here. You could just have it anywhere along the line of action. Yeah, the same, it's correct. So if I put it there or move it here or there, as long as it's gonna be on that, yeah. there's not gonna be any rotation and any motion. Right? So, so when I have the two forces, if I have a member that's going to be applied on the two forces on that. So, let's get back here. I have this member, point A, point B. And two forces apply at A and B. No more force. How it can be the equilibrium? The magnitude has to be the same. Magnitude has to be the same. Two forces applying in an object, any object. Yeah. The only way that it's going to be equilibrium is that two forces should be equal, should be opposite, and should have the same line of action that pass through the both points. So if I want to do that, I have to go ahead and say, okay, I will connect these two points together. That's my line of action. And then the forces I have should be on that one that is the F, the F. This is a very important uh, rule because we are gonna use them in the case to know, find the direction of the force. In that case, although I don't know the magnitude, but the direction is that. The direction of the force should be there. I cannot play with the direction of the force. And it's the same as any object. If I have, for example, the object like this, and I said two forces apply at A and B. So the only way that I can do that is that, again, I have to connect A to B. And then, after I connected A to B, the line of the force should be along that. The force like that. So this is F. This is going to be F. So that's the only way it can be uh, in equilibrium. two forces, the only way for two force Two 
forces are equal Both of them should have this, the both forces should have the same line of action. Two forces. Now if I have the three force member, so Three force members, there are two ways that they can be uh, in equilibrium. One way is that if I go ahead and say I have point A, B, and C, one way is that. And they are not going to have the same magnitude again. So we have one, we have two, we have three. That's one way. The second way that they might be in equilibrium is that they are all going to be horrible. That's what I said. Explain. We have one. They cannot be in equilibrium in any other condition. Is it either this one or that? Um, I mean, would it make sense for this to be a thing? That's why I'm checking. Uh, could it, like the position of F1 and F2 be swapped so that the one side seems to have more pull than the it would have like the one force is pointing down and the two forces that are pointing up are next to each other. Would that still be in equilibrium? Um, it can be. It can. The only thing is that so those are our schematic. So you have to make sure. In this case, they are definitely in equilibrium. In this case, F1, F2, F3, you have to find the magnitude to make sure they are in the equilibrium. But if they are not intersecting in in the same point, no matter what's the value, they never gonna be yeah. uh, in equilibrium. If they are not, or if they are not parallel, no matter what's the value. But yeah, I agree what you say. The magnitude should. The magnitude will affect things. Affect things. There, as long as they are equal, it doesn't matter. Sorry, 
that whole book is um, incredible. So, say that if I have So this is going to ask us that find the reaction of support. So we want the reaction of the support at A. So if you look at it, how many unknown do I have at A? It's a pin. It doesn't let it go left or right. It doesn't let it go up and down. It's true. So it's only true unknown at A. So I have I am gonna have the AX and AY at the A. Right. right in there. So I'm gonna have AY and AX. What about the point E? How many unknowns do I have at E? Same, uh, G, same thing. Same, so I have G, Y, E, X. So I'm gonna, I, I, I have four unknowns. What am I gonna do with that? I only have G uh, equilibrium equation. Doesn't matter if I have here three equation four on one. So I have to kind of find out some other relationship between these four forces. So I have to find one more relationship. I have three equations for unknowns, so I have to find one other relationship. So one way that's that if I open that DB, what it gives me? This is a D and this is a B. What 
What is the DB uh, member? So look at the D and B. There's only forces at point D and only forces at B. Is there any force anywhere else? So it's going to be a two force, two force member. So if it's a two force member, what does it mean? The forces have to have the same line of action. So they have to be the same magnitude. Yeah. So it's going to give me one idea there. So if this is a D, so I'm going to connect these two together. And I'm pulling it, so it's just pulling it off. So most likely these are going to be in the other direction. But look at that. I pull that, so it's pulled this. So it's probably pulling it off. I can't guess the direction of those. So most likely it's going to look like this. Just pull it off. So it's going to be a, this is going to be the, this is going to be the, how much is going to be this angle? This is point two, point two. So it's going to be 45 degrees. But that gives us one relation. So it gives a direction of the D to us. Now if I go ahead and open that A, B, C, A, B, C. I know that at the C I have 400 going here. If I add the D, I have this, I'm going to have the reaction of that. If this is the action, it's going to be a reaction. So it's going to be. What would be the direction of the A? We need the X component to add up to uh, before doing that. Is it all the forces applied at A, B, and C? Correct? So the three force member. Three force member can be equilibrium either they are parallel or intersecting. Are they parallel? No. So they had to intersect. So if they had to intersect, it means that if I extend this one and this one, if they intersect at that point, the A should go also to that same point. 